Okay. Hi, you're welcome back to my channel. Um, how are you all doing? Hope you're great. So I, I will be bringing you a story, an article, not really a story, an article written by a former um, uh, uh, member of the U.S. Department of State, uh, Mr. John Campbell, where he talked about um, where, he, where he talked about the security deteriorating in Nigeria's former Biafra. That is the title of his uh, article. It says security deteriorating in Nigeria's former Biafra. Here, John Campbell uh, is the Rolf Born K. Senior Fellow for Africa Policy Studies at the Council on Foreign Relations in Washington, D.C. He is the author of the new book, Nigeria and the Nation State Rethinking Diplomacy with the Postcolonial World, published December 2020, and writes the blog Africa in Transition. From 1975 to 2007, Mr. John Campbell served as U.S. Department of State Foreign Service Officer. He served twice in Nigeria as political counselor from 1988 to 1990 and as ambassador from 2004 to 2007. John Campbell's additional overseas posting include Leon, Paris, Geneva, and Pretoria. He also served as Deputy Assistant Secretary for Human Resources, Dean of the Foreign Service Institute School of Language Studies, and Director of, Director of the Office of UN Political Affairs. So he had he wrote an article uh, on Nigeria published uh, February 9, 2021, with the title Security Deteriorating in Nigeria's Former, former Biafra. As you all know, or if you don't know, uh, there's been a serious agitation for for the state of Biafra from Nigeria, spearheaded by the indigenous people of Biafra, IPOB, led by Nandikano. So this article, uh, you can go over to www.cfr, CFR, Council for Foreign Relations, CFR.org, you get the article. So the article here uh, also has a contribution from Nolan Quinn. He says, fighting between government forces and an Igbo separatist group risk adding yet another challenge for the Buhari administration. The emergence of an Igbo paramilitary force highlights the growing breakdown of any federal government monopoly on the use of force in the face of multiple security challenges. Even in good times, Security is fragile in the former Biafra. Insecurity has multiple dimensions. The Igbo people are Nigeria's third largest ethnic group. They were the losers in the 1967-70 to civil war in which they tried to establish a separate Igbo-dominated state, Biafra. Many Igbo continue to believe that they are disadvantaged in Nigeria and there continues to be residual support for Biafran independence though not among the Igbo establishment. Conflict over land and water, once largely restricted to the Middle Belt, is spreading to the South, where it frequently acquires ethnic and religious overtones. Many Igbo, mostly Christian, believe they are targeted by the Muslim Fulani headsmen, bringing their flocks south in search of better pastures. Criminal activities is widespread, and often the Igbo attributed to the Fulani. Many residents of the former Biafra are alienated from the federal government and see the Buhari administration as Muslim-dominated and as enabling Fulani atrocities. Added to this mix is Nanukano's indigenous people of Biafra, IPOB, a separatist movement that reflects and facilitates popular discontent. The federal government recalling the civil war, is bitterly opposed to Igbo separatism, as is most of the Igbo establishment. The government has long sought 
to defend the IPOB and silence scanner, sometimes through illegal or quasi legal methods. He, in turn, that is Nanakano, has used alleged Fulani depredations as a means of attacking the Buhari administration. Starting in August 2020, violence between IPOB and the federal police and the army has escalated. In that month, the Nigerian army killed up to 21 civilians. The Nigerian police killed up to 21 civilians at an IPOB meeting in Enugu state. In response, the IPOB promised retaliation and urged its members to practice self-defense. In December, Kano announced the establishment of a paramilitary wing, the Eastern Security Network, ESN, allegedly to protect the Igbo against the Fulani. For the federal government, a non-state sanctioned parliamentary organization in the old Biafran heartland was unacceptable, and it moved against ESN camps. In late January 2021, serious fighting broke out in the town of Olo in Imo State, leading to significant numbers of displaced persons. Fighting stopped when Kano declared a ceasefire, saying that he was redirecting ESN efforts against Fulani raiders. He also claimed that the federal forces had withdrawn from Olo. Supporters of ESN, including in the Igbo diaspora, justify it as being like Meyati Allah in the north and Amoteko in the Yoruba land in the west. Both are parliamentary operations outside the federal government's legal purview, but with some ambiguous level of government approval. The north and the west were on the winning side in the civil war, and they may help account for and that may help account for the federal government's greater tolerance for their parliamentary organizations than for one associated with the Igbo. The escalating fighting in IPOB strongholds carries the risk of radicalizing the population and building support for the IPOB. Credible evidence suggests police assaulted residents in Olo, and some police perpetrators have been arrested. The commissioner of police for Imo State has apologized, but as, as recently as December 2020, IPOB was saying that ESM forces were merely a vigilante group protecting the Igbo against the Fulani. Now, Kano has an organized wing, the ESN, and believes he has authority to order a ceasefire in a fight with other forces. Violence is escalating, and the outcome is unpredictable. So that is the article uh, by uh, John Campbell on the growing insecurity situation in Nigeria, and uh, especially what's happening in the uh, in Biafra land, or eastern, or eastern part of Nigeria. So if you are new to my channel, please um, help subscribe. And if you're here already, thank you so much.